Our pregame is presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we're proud to call this home. It is Division Three Regional Championship game from the Stroh Center here at Bowling Green State University. Wayne Trace and Ottawa Glandorf will match up for a chance to go to Dayton next week. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to play by plate alongside Scoop Miller. Scoop, regional final, toughest game of all to win. We got two good teams here today. We got two great teams here today. They've had excellent seasons. Wayne Trace, uh, winners of 15 of their last 18 games. Those three losses by a combined five points. And on the other side of things, OG comes in with a 13 game winning streak. Both these teams know what it takes to get to the final four. We should have a great game here this afternoon. Let's talk about our keys. Our keys to the game are presented by Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area for over 100 years. How about Wayne Trace, Scoop? Well, for the Raiders, they have to rebound. That's going to be probably the telltale tonight. Can they match up with that uh, length that they're giving up here tonight against the Titans? I think the second thing is defense. You know, an interesting stat, Mark, when uh, OG shoots over 48% from the field, they're 20-0. When they're below 48%, they're just 3-3. Three three. So you're going to have to try to get them off the rhythm, defend. That's something Wayne Trace has done very well this season. Wayne Trace is 21-6. Ottawa Glandorf will come in at 23-3. and three. Keys for the Titans. Well, they're going to have to stay in front defensively. You know, they're going to have to keep those Wayne Trace guards from going downhill, something the Raiders have been very good at. I think the second thing is for OG, they need to play inside out. They need to come down, attack the rim, and then if the drive is not there, kick it out for those prolific three-point shooters that they are so uh, blessed with. Those are our keys to the game. We'll be back in just a moment with the starting lineups and a tip-off. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Stroh Center, Ottawa Glendorf and Wayne Trace for the Region Division III Championship matchup. Chance to move on next week. Here are our officials today. You see some experienced men out here. Kurt Lieber, Charlie Weidenauer, and Don Reese will be doing this particular game. The Titans have been introduced. We're about to bring out the Wayne Trace Raiders. And let's go through our starting lineups. Here is Ottawa Glendorf. They will go with Grant Schrader, 6-1. Junior, junior averaging four points a game. Number 11 is Theo Mag, 6'7", senior, 11.8, 7.5 rebounds. Hunter Stecksholdy wears 21. 6'2", senior, 8.9, 2.6 steals. Colin White wears number 22, 6'6", junior, 20 points a game and nearly six boards, four assists. And Caden Erford, 6'4", junior, 13.7, 3.5 rebounds per game for him. And Wayne Trace, they will go with number three, Hudson Meyer. Hudson is a 6'2 junior, averaging just under three a game. Tanner Lockoff wears number five, 5'10 freshman, about four a game. Brooks Lockoff wears number 20, 6'3 junior, 21.8. Tyler Davis, number 24, 6'4 senior, at seven boards, or seven points, and six and a half rebounds. And Kyle Stoller, 6'3 junior, 15.4 and nine rebounds for him per game. Scoop, would it be fair to say when I look at, here's our Titans and, and Coach McLaughlin's team. They are 23 and three, all three of those losses by combined eight points. Jim Linder's team, 21 and six. Scoop, maybe even look at it this way a little bit. Four of the top players in this game today are juniors. Yeah, Brooks Lockoff, Kyle Stoller, you know, Colin White, Caden Erford. These are teams that are deep and good. Yeah, that's just incredible, and a lot of these guys have really been playing since they were freshmen, so really, even though Wayne Trace only starts one senior, it's a very veteran crew. Theo Mag will go to the center circle and jump center. He will do so against Kyle Stoller. Kyle Stoller and Brooks Lockoff, both over 1,000 points and just juniors. Colin White is over 1,000 points as well, and he's a junior. Here's the ball tipped into the backcourt, and it will go into the hands of Hudson Meyer. And then over to Brooks Lockoff, and finally, Tanner Lockoff will set to play. First pass is Stoller on the wing. Brooks Lockoff. Scoop, you've seen a lot of uh, Wayne Trace this year. Brooks Lockoff, form-wise, one of the best shooters around. Yeah, no question about it. He can shoot it from deep. He can shoot it off the dribble, and he can take it to the rim and finish. There's his brother Tanner, takes one in, rebound uh, to Cal White. OG looks to push right away. 
Throw it up on top. Now it's Hunter Stecksholdy, and now over to the wing. Erford, now they find Grant Schrader, and the pass goes. Tipped out of bounds. Well, Mark, both these teams are so good at the defensive end. Uh, they come out to very aggressive band to man. Wayne Trace will mix things up quite a bit uh, as this game progresses. But how well they can defend those shooters for the Titans is going to really be the telltale tonight. Steck Schulte, three ball for him. A little long, and the rebound pops out to Brooks Lockoff. We'll go the other way. Tanner Lockoff in the corner, looked at a three and turned it down. Stoller goes inside, challenges and misses, but the rebound will stay here as it goes off to Theo Mag. And Tyler Davis were battling inside, right in front of the OG student section. This will be a jump around the corner by Lockoff. And the rebound comes to Erford. And ahead to Steck Schulte. Schrader in the corner. And Theo Mag. Mag works inside, goes up with the left hand and scores. Theo Mag's first basket is the first basket of the game. A great move by the senior, and that's something that's going to be important for the Titans uh, to attack the rim, kind of play inside out. That time they get points from ground zero. Excellent start here for OG. Break the 2 2 1 press. Cross court pass goes to Meyer. Hudson throws it back out. Here's Lockoff, and he will go off glass. He missed. Stoller battles inside for the rebound, and it went off of Erford. Well, right now, I really like how Wayne Trace is attacking the offensive glass. Something's going to be important. They have to find a way to get a guy back to slow down that OG transition game. You have to find a way to get some second chance points. Jumper will go. First basket is Kyle Stoller's basket. No, Kyle Stoller's been playing so well. He's averaging north of 15 points a game, uh, nearly 20 here in the tournament run. Steck Schulte throws it inside. Mag. Theo works. Here's a kick out. This will be Schrader out of the corner. Three ball. Grant Schrader. Now, great inside out possession by the Titans. Schrader comes in uh, shooting uh, only 27% uh, behind the arc. But that's a good start there. Three ball corner pocket. Here's Stoller again, working against a double team. This will be a kick out to Tanner Lockoff, and he nails a three ball. Wow, what an answer by the freshman Tanner Lockoff. That was beyond the college three-point line. String music, all not at five. Steck Schulte, White. They look inside to Mag. Here's the bounce pass to him. Here's a three to go up from Erford. Well, so much for a slow shooting start, Scoop. Yeah, we talked about it when OG shoots north of 48%, they're 20 and 0, and uh, that's good math right there. The second three of the afternoon for the Titans. Stoller's going to challenge Mag and scores. Kyle Stoller's got points three and four. Oh, what a big time move by the uh, junior Kyle Stoller, a first team GMC selection, back to back seasons. Back cut, Steck shoulder, he's cut off. Schrader in the corner, and now Mag. Off of Mag screen. This will be up. But Schrader's going to pull the trigger again. Instead, he penetrates dribble. Here's Erford. And his pass is a tough one to handle, but it's tipped out of bounds. Yeah, great job by that uh, Wayne Trace zone defense. Kind of picking your poison, but you do not want to get in the game of horse as you see it right there as OG has so many prolific three-point shooters. Here's Erford from the corner. Then the rebound comes to Davis. Brooks Lockoff in a hurry. Brooks Lockoff pull-up jumper is a little hard, and Colin White snags the rebound, heads the other way. Four plus minutes into this one. Seven, eight. Mag with a catch and score. Well, once again, I love how OG is really attacking the paint. They're playing downhill, and that time uh, 
White drew the double team, left Mag all alone on that backside. Colin White averages four assists per game. They're getting close to 10. No, they get across to Stoller. Hudson Myers challenges. He goes right to the rim and scores. Got to do that against pressure. Ah, great take by the junior Myers, uh, who's really uh, kind of been uh, the glue of this team. That time he took advantage of a one on one, got to, to the rack. Great finish inside. 10 9 Titans. Erford's going to work inside. Kick out. This will be Schrader again. Short. White rebounds. Tried to squeeze it inside to Schrader and could not. Substitutions in the game for OG. We're bringing Levi Unterbrink, and I think Westrick came in, Dave West Westrick. And number 15 would be Kayla Winans for Ray Trace. Not many stoppages in play, Scoop. They've just been going up and down the floor. Yeah, both these teams can do that. Uh, you know, Wayne Trace comes in uh, scoring uh, nearly 55 points a game, and Otto Landorf nearly 70 points a game. So these are two teams that like to get up the floor, like to shoot it, but they also Love to defend, and that's the reason they're playing for a uh, chance to go to the Final Four next week. White has just checked in a moment ago. Stoller gets a three look, nails it. Kyle Stoller's got seven in the opening quarter. Now Stoller off to a great start. Uh, they've really put the clamps on Brooke Lockhoff, but uh, Kyle Stoller there to pick up the slack. And the Raiders go up by a pair. Here's Underbrink who just came into the game, and Erford. Erford turns the corner, lost the basketball. Got numbers going the other way. Lockoff, a little floater in the lane, that scores. A uh, tremendous dribble move there by Lockoff. That time he's able to take it deep in the paint. No one better than shooting off the dribble than Brooks Lockoff. And that Great brought the, the Raider fans to life. They see their team up four early. Underbreak. Ball slapped away, but Underbrink gets it back, goes to the rim, and we're going to get no contact. Slapped out front by Westrick. White goes to the rim, and his shot rolls out, and Underbrink hit it out of bounds. Banks coming back in. Well, that time Wayne Trace dodges the ball up. They give up another offensive rebound. But watch that finish on the other end there by Brooks Lockoff. Again, uh, when he puts the ball in the rack, he gets downhill. Boy, he's a tough guard, and I think that's why one of the keys for OG tonight, they just have to stay in front defensively, not let the likes of Brook Lockhoff get into the paint where he's got a great act for finishing. Winans, under pressure, is able to find Tanner Lockhoff. Here's Brooks. Stick shoulder has him. Brooks with a minute to go. Tanner Lockhoff. Lockoff under pressure. Finally gets Winans. Good, good job there by Winans being hounded there by Cal White. Didn't panic. Used the uh, full uh, four and a half seconds to hold the ball, then put it on the floor to get a fresh five count. Waitrace to uh, try to take this down here as we now hit the 42nd mark of this opening quarter. Tanner Lockoff beats him off the dribble and decides to bring it back out to Kyle Stoller. Here comes a double team. Here comes White. Mags out there. they got three guys doing the basketball. They're going to spin the other side. Good ball movement. Yeah, traffic. Wayne Trace doing an excellent job of beating passes. You know OG is going to try to pressure. So you have to uh, go get the basketball. Off the screen to score inside, Tanner Lockoff. Oh, what a find by Kyle Stoller there. That time uh, the curls move works. Tanner Lockoff. A great pass cross, cross court to Westrick. will get a basket for OG as the quarter comes to an end. After the first eight, it's Raiders 16, Titans 12. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's regional semifinals presented by Simplified Flooring. We install with accuracy and efficiency so you can start enjoying now. And Carry Insurance is a premier sponsor for Wayne Trace. Carry Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by there. Schrader with the 
basketball. White. Baseline jumper, Colin White, and it rolls in for him. Colin White's first basket. A couple of assists in the first quarter, didn't score. Now you knew it was going to be a matter of time for uh, Colin White was able to dent the score in Callum. Now you just have to keep him from getting on those runs like he's so capable of doing. Speaking of runs, Mark, uh, that last basket at, at the horn there by Westrick that beat the buzzer in the first quarter, that ended the 9-0 way trace run. So Raiders doing an excellent job at both ends here early. Got them spread out right now, trying to trap the basketball, lock off ball fakes. There's that move to the goal you talked about. Battle inside for the rebound. Good strong rebound, Kyle Stoller. A tremendous job by the junior Kyle Stoller. You can see right there why he's a two-time uh, first-team GMC selection. His hustle there, his positioning, his strength allows him to go up and get that basketball surrounded by three OG defenders. Right now, the rebound's even six and six. So Wayne Trace really doing a great job of trying to uh, neutralize where you'd think OG would have a strong advantage. We played the entire first quarter without a personal foul. Schrader's foul is the first foul of the basketball game. Stoller misses inside. Steck shoulder working baseline. Finds Mag and Theo Mag scores. Oh, what a six. great find that time from Hunter Stecksholdy to find Theo Mag on the rim run. Again, uh, excellent ball movement. Anytime you get the ball in the short corner, you want to make a rim run. That's exactly what Mag did. Tied at 16. First four points of the second quarter have gone away of the Titans. Tyler Davis will hand off. Davis goes inside, there's a kick pass out. And they reset. Hudson Myers with the basketball, under pressure from Schrader. Now Stoller. Lock off, pull up jumper. Colin White. Colin White passes to Mag, and Theo lost it under traffic. And kicks it back out. Good strike Theo Mag. Now he goes to the rim, passes, and that shot's blocked from behind by Stoller. Good heads up play then from Davis to get back on the floor. To yeah, what a smart, possession. smart play to get reestablished before he touched that basketball. Right now, you can see these officials uh, really let these guys play inside. Both fact. these teams known for the physicality, so this is going to be a battle here, as we've seen here in the opening 11 minutes. Ball's tip loose, still. Nope, White knocked it on the sideline. Just remember, scoop for all of us old timers, Bill Russell. Remember Bill? who said, please do not bring any weak stuff in here. <laughs> Tonight, you better not bring any weak stuff inside. No, I think that's safe bet here. Uh, both teams contested everything. OG has really picked up their defensive intensity. They're really making it tough on uh, Brooks Lockoff, who comes in averaging over 21 points a game. Brooks has four. Kyle Stiller has five, as does Tanner Lockoff. Here comes a trap at midcourt. Hudson Myers. He's going to the rim and going to get an and one opportunity. Hudson Myers. Wow, big time move by the junior Hudson Myers once again. He now has four points. Comes in, only scored two and a half points a game. But you can see that's kind of a result of Ottawa Glandorf really put so much focus on uh, Brooks Lockoff and Kyle Stoller. It's going to give opportunities like this to Hudson Myers. But look at right there. Great job protecting the ball. Look at that tough angle, and what a nice kiss off the window. And then he connects on the end one. So right now for Wayne Trace, to lead back up to three points. Our very first Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima free throw of the basketball game. Had sale, several Dale's concrete three-point field goals, and we're going to get a foul. That will be the first foul that will go against Wayne Trace, and they got Hudson Myers on the Trying to jam a cut by Colin White. Yeah, that time Myers was really all over Colin White, uh, who was practically out of bounds underneath the basket there. But again, those are probably fouls you live with because you have to do all you can to try to slow down Colin White. 
Herford for three out of the corner. That's a Dale's concrete three-point field goal. He's got a pair of those for six points. Uh, he's such a tremendous uh, knockdown shooter when he can catch and shoot in rhythm. Uh, he's a lethal force out there. You can see why he was second team WBL this season. Timeout, Wayne Trace. We're tied at 19, 422 to go in the second. We're watching high school basketball, WOSN. Scoreboard provided by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt, seamless spouting. Our to replays today are sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit Loudix at the Van Wert location or online at loudix.com. A Metzger Financial Services timeout. Our second quarter sponsor is Production Products in Columbus Grove. Tied at 19, that was our first timeout of the basketball game. Davis, a little floater. That was a pretty shot by Tyler Davis. A uh, sweet move by the southpaw, uh, Davis. That time, uh, a tough floater there on the baseline, but he gets it to go. Great response out of the timeout. Colin White wanted to come off a double screen and could not. Erford looks inside to Brad Mag. Colin White, pull up jumper, Colin White. That one spun out and it's rebounded by Schrader. Who goes back up through traffic and scores. He's got five in the game. Oh, tremendous job by the 6-1 junior, Grant Schrader. Again, getting position on that backside. Trying to uh, hurt uh, the Raiders on the offensive glass. Steal. Titans. Mag's going to throw it ahead. This is Erford. Erford goes through contact and scores. He's got eight now. The officials have made it very clear they're going to let him play inside. That was the first Wayne Trace turnover. But to credit out of Glandorf, they turned it into two points at the other end. They now have a lead. Stoller heads inside, accepts a little contact, and that will be a foul that will go against Brad Mag, I believe. Wait till the official makes his mark. It is. We'll watch it coming up right here. The finish at the other end there by White. That time, uh, the freshman Tanner Lockoff tried to take the charge. There you see uh, an attempt for a charge right there, but again, Officials have made it clear they're going to let you take the ball strong of the rack here today. Kyle Stoller makes the first of his two leaves, leaves famous recipe chicken free throws. Now Stoller comes in shooting 73% uh, percent from the stripe. Averages nearly a double-double at 15.4 points and nine rebounds. What a tremendous junior season he's had. Over a thousand career points as a junior that matched uh, Fellow classmate yeah. Brooks Lockoff as well. Stuck both of those free throws to tie it at 23. That ball stolen by Stoller. He's headed the other way. Erford tries to get back, and what a nice left-handed finish that was. Big time move there by Kyle Stoller. All started there with that uh, steal at the defensive end. And that's the third OG turnover. Wayne Trace converts it to points, something they've been very good at all season long. Raiders go back up two. Levi Unterbrink. Erford into the lane. He's got a little runner, and is it going to count? Yeah, great job by Kate Erford. Uh, watch it right there, that quick first step, and there you have it. So important for OG to play downhill, go inside out, and that time the help did not get there. Great finish by the junior. But there he connects on the end one. So again, famous. we've had so many lead changes yeah. here in this opening half. Tremendous Lee's, Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Eleven now in the basketball game for Erford. He is the leading scorer in the game. Stoller has nine. The foul went to Tyler Davis, his first, team second. Wine is trying to get in the lane and cannot. But ran Lockoff off the three-point line. Now Stoller goes to the rim. And we're getting an offensive foul. Ah, tremendous play by Kay Nerford uh, one more time. This time at the defensive end. But watch it. He is clearly set. Watch him right there. He's taking the charge there. Stoller is going hard. Excellent call there by the officials. 
And a big time play by Erford at the defensive end. First foul, Kyle Stoller. Also becomes a turnover. We'll take the other way as Hunter Stecholi advances the basketball. Schrader, this is Erford off a double screen. Short, mag rebound. Stripped away, good play, Tyler Davis. Titans up a point. Just approaching 90 seconds to go in the opening half. This is exactly where Wayne Trace was at the end of the first quarter. They took uh, nearly a minute off the clock before they got Tanner Lockoff freed up. Uh, off a curl move to get an easy deuce. Right in front of us, Hudson Myers. Pair of number threes as he's matched up with Grant Schrader has to give it up. Here comes a double team. Winans is the outlet passer. Here's Lockoff. Right to the rim. Lockoff floats it up, misses the right rebounds. Titans with under a minute. A good look by Lockoff there. It just rimmed out. Otto Glandorf now with the last five rebounds here of the second quarter. Now they'll look to uh, maybe take some air out here and wind it down for a final shot. Grant Schrader possessing the basketball. And Wayne Trace is content to say you can have the last shot under pressure. But they're not going to come out and attack the basketball. Coach Linder barking some assignments out. OG people up for offense. Raider people up for defense. Here we go. Colin White. Skip pass. Steck shorty for three. Rebound Erfer, but he couldn't control it, and the half comes to an end. 16 minutes into this regional championship game. Otto Glandorf, 26, Wayne Trace, 25. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Stroh Center Division III Regional Championship game. Our halftime adjustments are presented by Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. Mark Shine, Scoop Miller. Scoop, we're going to put some stats up on the board. You've got a stat page in front of you. What jumps off the page at you right now? Well, right now what jumps off the page, Wayne Trace has only turned the ball over two times. One of those turnovers was a charging foul on Kyle Stoller. And that resulted in just two points from OG's defense, something OG has been so good at over the years. So that's the first one. Both teams shot the ball very well. You see the shooting numbers really almost identical. I thought OG did a great job of limiting the three-point looks for Wayne Trace. They were just two for four for 50%, but keeping them to just four attempts is awfully big because Wayne Trace comes in uh, shooting uh, 16 three-pointers per contest. I look at our score sheet, though, Scoop. I see Colin White with just two points, and I see Brooks Lockhoff with just four. I'm, both coaches like to see those guys get going in the second half. Yeah, and that's both by design. You know, credit both defenses. Colin White just one for four from the field in the opening six minutes. Meanwhile, uh, Brooks Lockhoff just two for eight in the opening uh, 16 minutes. But his teammates more than made up for it. Uh, they were eight for 11 combined from the field after a lockoff struggle. But again, I think both coaches, you know, these are two of the best. They're gonna find ways to free up their superstars. And again, that's been a great contest. We've had uh, several lead changes, seven ties. I think we're gonna be in for a great second half. I'm looking at the score sheet. The other two talented juniors we talked about, Kyle Stoller with nine, 11 for Caden Erford. They have stepped up in the absence of their other two teammates. Yeah, and that's what's so good about both these teams. The fact that, you know, they got more one guy that's gonna be able to hurt yep. you. So. They're going to look for those secondary guys to step up. I thought Hudson Myers, you know, he had five big points for the Raiders. He also did a great job of trying to limit the touches of Cowan White. We'll see what Coach McLaughlin has up his sleeve the second half to try to free up his superstar. Our halftime adjustments have been presented by Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss Center. Area residents, good health through chiropractic care. Second half action coming up after this. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN.
Tonight's regional is presented by Simplified Flooring. We install with accuracy and efficiency so you can start enjoying your home's new look as soon as possible. That's Simplified Flooring. Production Products Incorporated of Columbus Grove is hiring. They offer great opportunities to advance and free on-site medical clinic. They apply today. They are sponsoring our third quarter. And we got Afrocentric defeated South Point today, 55-38. Thanks, Scoop, for coming up with that one. So with that win, Afrocentric will be heading to the Final Four for the sixth time in school history. And right now, uh, what's to be determined? Who is going to join them in that semifinal matchup at UD? Will it be the Titans of Ottawa Glandorf or the Raiders of Wayne Trace? We're 16 minutes away from uh, deciding that. Colin White with a steal. Here's, nope, oh, it's right back again. Brooks Lockoff. A little frantic pace here to open up these third eight minute quarter. Ottawa Glandorf defeated Afrocentric in the state semis a year ago. What do we got? Timeout Jim Linder. Just 19 seconds into a very frantic third quarter. So they'll match up again. That Our premier sponsor today for the Wayne Trace Raiders is Carey Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by to see how Carey Insurance can assist you with your insurance needs. You mentioned Afrocentric. They defeated South Point today 55-38. OG defeated them in the semifinals a year ago in Dayton before losing in the final Cincinnati Taft. Been since 1991, since the uh, Wayne Trace Raiders were in the state championship. What time, last, last time they won it, they were there in 2015. Yeah, what a great team that was in 91 that uh, yeah. took it all in. How about that? Coached by the legendary uh, Al Welch, who had 520 uh, career wins for the Raiders. Saw Al here the other night at one of the tournament games. Coach Linder has taken his second Metzger Financial Services timeout. He was trying to prevent a turnover with his team pinned on the sideline and a five second count winding down. Lockoff and Stexroy, the five counts on. A little bit of separation right there and stop the count from going. We know that Coach McLaughlin talked about we have to force more than two Wayne Trace turnovers. Yep. And just like that, that's the second forced turnover on the Raiders here in the opening 50 minutes. So. I think the message uh, not only was clear, it got to his guys, and they've not only had two turnovers here nearly going, but they also forced Wayne Trace to burn one of their timeouts as well. Coach Linder was trying to get his team to get moving offensively, and they did not in time to avoid the five-second count. Fortunately for them, it is a dead ball turnover because they OG feasts on live ball turnover. Schrader's going to get a three look out of the corner, short. And who tipped it out of bounds? I think it went out of bounds off of Stecksholdy, I believe. Yeah, that was uh, Hunter Stecksholdy fighting for the board there, uh, trying to go over the top of the freshman, Tanner Lockoff. Lockoff had pretty good position, made a nice checkout. Grant Schrader buried one of those threes back in the first quarter, a Dales concrete three-point field goal, but not that time. Titans gamble, and boy, the ball went off of Colin White's knee on a low pass. He'd like to steal. Theo Mag has come back out with his left leg all wrapped up like it's got a scraper and abrasion to it. Uh, tremendous closing speed there by Colin White. Uh, that time the Raiders had a two-on-one and uh, an easy hoop, but they were not able to get past uh, White. And there's a tough shot being forced. Going to be an air ball. Yeah, Lockoff said uh, somebody got a hand on it. I don't miss shots like that. <laughs> there's Mag's knee. The official did not have a similar look, and now he's going to get a little bit of break as Winans will take his place. Kale steps in, a 5'10 junior. It's Coach McLaughlin. There have been eight Titans in the basketball game, six Raiders. Here's White down low. Elevates and leaves his shot short. Mag goes right in and gets the rebound and scores with a left hand. He's got eight in the game. Yeah, big time play by Mag right there. And again, that's that length. Uh, it was going to be the biggest concern for the Raiders coming in. That time, Mag just uh, played above everybody else. Made that look awfully easy. First time all-conference player in the Western Buckeye League. Colin White was player of the year in the conference. 
for the second consecutive season. What a yeah, feat that, that is, especially in that Western Buckeye League. So many great players. Davis going up with the left hand, missed it. Mag with another rebound. Steck shoulders perks pushing it. Pass inside, and Schrader goes up and scores on a good pass. They have moved the basketball around very well today, Scoop. Yeah, they're getting points in the paint. That's going to be awfully huge here if this game unwinds. They had uh, 14 in the paint in the first half, but they've got a great start here in the third quarter, the biggest lead of the night here for the Titans. Up to five. Mag almost had a steal. This wine has traveled under pressure. Scoop, when you play OG, I've used this analogy several times. It's like going to the beach to build the sandcastle. You know, the first wave comes in, the second wave comes in, time the fourth or fifth wave comes in, your castle's gone. That's kind of how they play. Yeah, they just make you work so hard at both ends. Eventually, uh, they're, they're banking on you wearing out. And right now, this is a uh, Wayne Trace team that not able to play downhill. They're going east and west. They're getting the ball near the sideline. They're getting trapped way too many times. Erford for three, short. Stoller rebounds. Now, if you're Wayne Trace, you just got to get back into a half-court set. But to credit OG, they have not allowed the Raiders to really run a half-court set. Their defense has been that good. It's hard to run your offense when you're trying to catch the ball near the timeline here to set things up. They haven't scored here in three and a half minutes. Stoller rebounds, and that won't go, but he's fouled. That Foul goes to Underbrink. Amazing how many times Kyle Stoller just kind of ups his game to uh, to meet the challenge, and that time he gets a rebound. He had no business getting on that backside, and he draws the contact. So an opportunity here for Wayne Trace and he to will put get, points on the board. He missed his first Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Here's the replay, thanks to Loudix Jewelry, and there's you can see he just got backed underneath. And that one will roll around and fall in. He's a double-figure scorer now with 10. Wayne Trace now four for five from the free throw line on the afternoon. White tried to get to the rim. It's knocked away from him. Live ball turnover. Here goes Wayne Trace. The lockoff gets cut off by Underbrink. Pass inside Davis. Here's Lockoff. Trying to beat Mag, and his pass goes to Steckscholdy. A great defense once again, all predicated by Underbrink there, stopping Brooks Lockoff one on one in the transition. Steckscholdy Schloeder goes in. Under Steckscholdy's first basket, he's a nine point a game scorer now with two. And we're going to get a Wayne Trace timeout as they trail by six. It's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. Loudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit Loudix at the Van Wert location or online at loudix.com, and they are sponsoring our instant replays tonight. Wayne Trace takes their third time out here in uh, the basketball game, their second in this quarter, and they trail by six. And Scoop, I, I don't know how many fire marshals in Bowling Green because Somebody comes in here today and they'll wonder how many people got in this place. This place is jammed up. Yeah, this is what you want to see in high school basketball at the regional level. This thing is back to the rafters. You got people standing in the corners. Parking lot uh, was uh, really full. We got here way before the yeah. game started this afternoon. I was here at 1120. There were 200 people waiting in line to get in the game. 45 minutes before the doors open. Let's see if uh, Wayne Trace gets has a rally in him. Trailing by six. And they've uh, got just a single point here in this quarter, number three. Lockoff, Steckshoulder has him. This is Tanner Lockoff with Underbrink. Lockoff, Brooks trying to turn the corner. And Underbrink won't let him loose. Now they've got Stoller trapped on the sideline. Davis gets that pass out of traffic. Davis lost to basketball. This is Colin White headed the other way, and he will be fouled. Just incredible, the intensity that OG brings to the table at the defensive end. 
They're contesting every pass they're making. Brooks Lockoff and company work so hard just to get the basketball. Then when they get it, they're typically 35 feet away and near the sideline. And that time, probably a smart foul there in Hudson Myers as OG had an easy three on two opportunity. Here's a jumper out of the corner, a three ball that will splash for Levi Underbrink. Uh, Underbrink comes in shooting 48% from beyond the arc, but his defense has been even better this afternoon, putting the clamps on lockoff. There's Meyer, he finds Davis, tries to get away from Underbrink and can't. Here's Stoller spins in the lane with a pretty left-handed move. He's got 12 in the game. Now, great recognition by Kyle Stoller. That time, everybody was denying uh, all over the half court. That left a one-on-one opportunity for Stoller inside. He took advantage. Sweet move there and finished with the left hand. Colin White works the lane, runs into his teammate, Westrick, and lost the basketball. And Stoller banged it off of back of Underbrink, but I think was he out of bounds or not? No, I guess he was not. Take a look at this again. Yes, yeah, three. Play, look at that three. Catch and shoot rhythm. Bottoms out the net. Again, great efficiency in the half court. But look at the answer by Kyle Stoller. And again, a tremendous spin move. Look at that uh, little scoop shot with the left hand. Remind me, he's a junior scoop. That's, that goodness. was pretty. Wow. Full court pressure, under break, up and wide in face. And you step on the sideline, or did he get fouled? Well, stepped on the sideline, didn't he? There was a lot of contact. There was no foul call, but yeah. he did step on the sideline. That time he took kind of a shot to the chin there. He lost his balance just enough to hit the sideline. We'll see if OG can cash in and take advantage here up seven trying to stretch yep. that lead. You see he stepped out of bounds. There was some contact ahead of time. Mag looking inside. Here's Underbrick going to the rim, and he fights one up. It's a little bit hard. Rebound, Davis. No, rebound, Stoller. Let's go the other way. Here's Davis. Stoller, or Stoller again to the rim. And Mag with a rebound. Couldn't duplicate that left-handed effort. Steck shoulder works, works. Erford rebounds and fights it up. It's going to be blocked, but a foul is called. That will go against Brooks Lockoff, his first. Uh, I love what OG's done here in the second half. They're getting so many touches inside, but lost a strong move there by Erford. He stays with it. And uh, you have to work hard to get a foul in this game here today, Mark. That's yeah, the third true. foul combined by both teams here in this third quarter where they have contested every dribble, every pass, every shot, every rebound. Man, these kids are leaving it all out there. Kay Durford makes the first of his Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Here's the second. 80% free throw shooter has 13 points in the game now. Here's a full court press that's trip tipped out of bounds by Schrader. No G continues to be physical uh, throughout the court. Why not? You have five fouls to give at this juncture. Davis, trap, finds Lockoff. Stoller, now they're off and trying to attack the press. And Hudson Meyer goes right at Theo Mag. I think Theo gets called for a foul. He does. That's a smart play there from Hudson Myers. That time, he forced the official to blow the whistle. He just went right in to Theo Mag there and tried to throw the ball up there in the rim. And there was a lot of contact, one of those where you're going to probably have to call something. So now the junior will head to the stripe. First one a little bit long. Lee's. Right now, that lead stays at nine points. His Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw is a bit hard. He'll become the second one. Number 10, Brady Miller's back in for the second time in this quarter. That one he made. Six points now for Hudson Meyer. A little more than double his season average. Yeah, that's getting up near a season high of nine points against Ottawa Hills uh, in this tournament. Steck Schulte. Colin White, Erford. 60 seconds to go, third quarter. It's been a good one for the Titans. Colin White, pull up jumper. That rimmed out. Kyle Stoller with the rebound. White almost with a steal. Numbers the other way. Tanner Lockoff looked at it for a moment. Now he's going to go to the rim, and he lost it. And Steckshoulder has it. 
We've got three bodies on the floor right now, all of whom are struggling to get up, and there's going to be a foul. That's a good foul, Scoop. We had bodies all over the place, and there were going to be numbers the other way. Davis gets foul number two. Yeah, right now, the players are kind of daring the officials to call a foul. You're going to see a lot of contact here at both ends. But nice to see everybody get back up. There's going to be a tackle by <laughs> Davis from behind. It's going to be a first down out of, out of Glendorf. <laughs> and they will have the basketball half a minute to go in the third quarter. The production Products Incorporated third quarter. Titans have put uh, 11 on the board this quarter, just four for Wayne Trace. A smart play here, take the last shot, plus Alex Landorf will get the ball to start the fourth quarter. Erford, back cut. Well, jumpers blocked, I think, by Lockoff, and this quarter will come to an end. It was a good quarter for the Titans, and they will take an eight-point lead to the four if you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Fourth quarter action here. Our quarter sponsor today is Production Products Incorporated in Columbus Grove. They're hiring, offering great opportunities to advance and free medical on-site clinic. Apply now at wayproducts.com and Simplified Flooring. It's our presenting sponsor today. We install with accuracy and efficiency so you can start enjoying your home's new look as soon as possible. That's Simplified Flooring. It was an 11 to four quarter Ottawa Glendorf scoop and their defense was outstanding in that quarter. It really was. Uh, that's what jumped off the chart at me. Obviously uh, they forced seven Wayne Trace turnovers after the Raiders only turned over really two times in the opening 16 minutes. So they really stepped it up. I'm not going to say a notch. They stepped it up three or four notches. Yes, sir. It just that did not give Wayne Trace a lot of field goal attempts there the entire eight minutes. And they will get the basketball to start, start the quarter. Erford tried to spin in the lane, has to give it back up out front. Here Schrader finds Erford in the corner. And now Mag, Theo spin move. Goes up with the right hand and scores inside. Theo Mag's got 10. And Ottawa Glandorf continues to attack the rim. They're getting so many points in the paint, doing a great job of trying to get at least a touch or two in the paint every time down on offense. That's been great math here in the second half. Colin White will get called for a foul as he whacked the dribbling Tanner Lockoff. Colin White's first foul. Yeah, nothing wrong with that foul right there because the way they've been getting after him, they've got away with some of those bumps there and uh, can convert as they had five points from their defense in that third quarter after only getting two points the entire first half from the defense. Kyle Stoller and Theo Mag on the baseline. Knight dribbles it out to the wing. Here's Winans. Look where Wayne Trace is starting yep. offense with this man-to-man -man pressure that's just been relentless here, especially here in the second half. Stoller goes all the way inside and got a held ball. That will stay with the Raiders. That will allow number 30 as Manley to enter. Miley into the basketball game. There's a look, a look, a look. And finally, they get it in bounds. And they ran at Lockoff. They have just been after him the entire game, basketball game. Brooks has just four in the game. Here's Stoller and Mag, and they're 45 feet away from the basket. There, Lockoff got loose and scored inside. A great job on the backdoor cut. When you're getting overplayed that heavily, it's going to open up backdoor scenarios. And credit to Raiders, they found one, took advantage to get the lead down to single digits. But now the defense has to come up big. OG trying to pull him out of that 1-2-2 two, two zone right now. Yep. Coach McCrossel says, says well, we're just going to hang on to it as long as you're going to play zone. Steck Shorty on the back cut. Schrader in the corner. Ag has to come out and relieve pressure. Erford, Steck Shorty. Eight point lead. Ottawa Glander, Colin White goes to the rim and finishes with the left hand. Just four points in the game for Colin White. He's got six boards, two assists, and three steals, though. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's out there trying to win the game. That time he recognized he had a one-on-one, -on -one, took that quick first step. There's a bomb from Lockoff, and he answers 
much needed three there by the Raiders. Gets it down to seven points. Dale's concrete three-point field goal. He's got loose for five points here quickly. Colin White works the lane. Grant Schrader with this side open. White's trying to post up. Mag goes inside. The jump hook from Theo Mag. Rebound, Kyle Stoller. Great job by Stoller. First he helped out of Mag and forced a tougher shot. Then he hustled back, got the rebound. Now a big possession here for Wayne Trace. They can make this a two-possession game right here. Another lock off three. That's banged out front to Stoller. Here comes Brooks again. White almost with a steal. And Bailey heads to the rim and draws a foul. Now Wayne Trace right now in aggressive mode. There you're going to see uh, Brooks lock off there, bury the three. He went on a 5-0 run by himself and watched the back cut there by Hudson Myers and the strong take to the rack. The Raiders heading to the uh, charity stripe where they need to cash in as points have been a premium against this OGD. And there the junior Myers connects. First of two, Lee's famous recipe, chicken free throws. Brooks Lockoff's taking another break. I just wonder, Scoop, if he hasn't had some illness situations. He's been on the bench off and on throughout the game. Of course, in this type of game, you're going to play anyway. Battle for the rebound. White gets it. Tyler Davis a little slow getting up. Well, gee, it's made uh, Brooks Lockoff work so hard at yes. both ends. They've been banging him on both ends of the floor. That's going to eventually take its toll. I like giving him just a quick rest. Steck shoulder goes up in traffic. It's tipped around and Steck shoulder gets it again. Erford pass inside. Schrader bounce pass Mag, but Winans got a hand on it. It'll be held ball and stay with OG. Ah, great job by Kale Winans there on the backside. That time OG had a huge advantage there deep in the paint where you're just not going to get a stop with that length. But watch uh, Winans right there, hustle back in there. There you can see the strength of the football player right there. He's not letting go of that. OG does have the arrow there. But just a two possession game right now at the four and a half minute mark. <laughs> Talk about a two point takedown. He just wrapped up Colin White as he tried to go across the lane. That'll draw a foul. It also brings Lockoff back into the game. In fact, both Lockoffs back into the game. You know, it's amazing these teams have shot as well as they have with the physicality that they're dealing with on both ends and the fact there's just have not been a lot of easy looks on either side of the court here tonight. Mag goes to the corner to get the basketball. Erford back cut, well defended. Schrader tries to get inside. Wayne Trace defense has been good this quarter. It really has. They've really upped their physicality, just trying to do all they can to limit those points in the paint. Theo Mag looked at Schrader and then decided to go up and shoot it and didn't have his full focus on the rim. Lockoff will be cut off head to the rim, and that's going to be a foul that will go against, looks like, uh, Steck Schulte. Yeah, you can see uh, Brooks Lockoff has been directed by head coach Jimmy Lender to uh, make it happen on the offensive end. But uh, here's that lockdown defense. There you see Lockoff do all he can to try to attack, try to get the corner. But again, the Titans have done such a great job of staying in front of Wayne Trace all night. And their length makes it tough to shoot over as well. Wyndham is finally finds Stoller to give it to. And Stoller goes to the rim where he will be fouled by Theo Mag. Kyle Stoller with 12 points will go to the free throw line. I tell you what, this has been impressive to watch Wayne Trace battle back with all the adversity they faced. There you see a lot of contact. And eventually Stoller's uh, perseverance pays off. And now he's heading to the charity stripe to try to uh, chip away at that six point deficit. A couple big free throws come up right here. Two more Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. That's point 13 for Kyle Stoller. And the lead is at five. OG has six team fouls, four for the Raiders. Makes them both. Here comes Wayne Trace. They've got it down to four. Here comes their crowd to life, too. Steck surely loses it to Erford, though. Mag's trying to post up inside. Steck surely with Tanner Lockoff. Colin White. 
Penetration dribble, White works, works, has to kick it back out. Three, nope. White goes and gets the rebound. What an athletic play that was. Timeout, wow. Ottawa. Glandorf, a Metzger Financial Services timeout. What an offensive rebound. Watch this. Watch, he's got two Wayne Trace Raiders on him. He just goes up and over and uh, just no way to defend that. Great play again by White. That's an awfully big basket there by the Titans. Titans with a six-point lead. Timeout. We're going to take a break. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Sponsor today for the Wayne Trace Raiders is Carry Insurance at Grover Hill. Call or stop by to see how Carry Insurance can assist you with your insurance needs. Production Products Incorporated in Columbus Grove is hiring, offering great opportunities to advance in a free on site medical clinic. Apply today at midwayproducts.com and they are sponsoring our fourth quarter tonight. OG's first Metzger Financial Services timeout of the basketball game, and they're going to go full court man. Three to go, Titans by six. And dribbling on the sideline was Tyler Davis trying to beat Theo Mag and bounced it on the sideline. Well, that's just how you draw it up. You force the only opening to that short corner where you can immediately get a lot of pressure on. Use that sideline as extra defender. And again, with the physicality, it's a little bump there, but the official's been very consistent to let the play. Big turnover there from the Raiders. Titans with a six-point lead, trying to build on that. OG needs a stop with three minutes to go. Here's Mag in the corner. Works and works, and going to kick out pass to the corner. Schrader's going to go inside, give it to Mag, and they score. Oh, what a move that time by Grant Schrader there to break down that uh, Raider defense. Mag all alone on the backside and two more points in the paint by the Titans. Drops a dime right into Theo Mag's hands, pushes the lead to eight with two and a half to go. Tanner Lockoff tried to get off the screen. That Stoller open on the wing. Stoller for three, huge basket. Wow, we've seen that so many times from Kyle Stoller over the season, and that's a big one right there. Much needed uh, bucket there by Wayne Trace, and that three gets it down to five point game. A huge Dales concrete three point field goal. It's 45 40 Titans. Two minutes to go in this one for a right to go to the state semifinals next weekend in Dayton. Wayne Trace with two fouls to give. Colin White. Six points in the game, Colin White looking for a screen from Mag. And then Wisely backs it back out. Coach McLaughlin says, be patient. We've got a lead, up five. Titans has doubled up on the sideline, lost the ball, but we get a foul. That will go to Tyler Davis. Scoop, let's say it this way. He's the first player in the game to be called for three fouls. That's really saying something, but that's the kind of gritty effort he's had all season long. Nearly gets the five count right there, but there you see the slap there on the uh, left side of the waist there. And still one more foul for the Raiders to give here before the Titans uh, head to the charity stripe. Underbrick took Schrader's place at that dead ball, and that's going to be a foul that will go against Tanner Lockoff. It is the second foul of the basketball game for Tanner. 16 foul, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, smart play by the freshman. That was her last foul to give. He went for the steal, got whistled for the foul. So now you have to sort of pick your poison. Uh, Ottawa Glandorf, a very good uh, free throw shooting team at 73% as a team. There's a lob pass, White. And he is going to be fouled. 80% free throw shooter on the season. He's going to get a one and one opportunity now. And Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Here comes uh, Schrader back in the game defensively. Yeah, good job by Colin White. He won the ball in his hands yep. and he tried to uh, keep it there, knowing that he's an 80% uh, free throw shooter. So great uh, execution by Otto Glandorf. There, White connects on the uh, first of the one of the uh, one. -on -one. He's had an outstanding oh. second half here, Mark. Bottoms that one out. Player of the year in the conference. 
player of the year in Northwest Ohio in Division III. Splash the second one too, and his coach takes a timeout with 128 to go and a seven point lead. Back in a moment, you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back at the Stroh Center, where our three-point field goal sponsor today has been Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Free throws today have been sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. And we are in our spring campaign. It's time to spring to life with WOSN and TLW TV 44. Our annual spring funding campaign is underway now. Please partner with us by giving a financial donation of any amount. Our campaign goal is $50,000 by Mother's Day. Donate online at wtlw.com backslash donate. Great backcourt pressure. Finally, they get it to Stoller. He's going to go across midcourt with White chasing him down. Seven-point lead. Stoller's going to get a three-look off a flare screen. Tanner Lockoff with the rebound. Brooks Lockoff for three. Got it. Wow, great job by the Raiders. Great execution on that flare screen to Stoller. Even though he missed the shot, Tanner Lockoff the rebound. He kicks it out to his brother Brooks, and there he splashes one home. What an answer. Wayne Trace not going away. We got a four-point game here with the buck one left. Scoop, how many times have we seen, if we look at the Dales concrete three-point field goal, everybody goes to offensive and defensive rebound on a three-point field goal, and at least the guy opened on the arc to, to get one if you get the offensive board. Well, that's a great point. You know, long shots mean long rebounds, so you cannot just settle for having position inside. You have to go get bodies on people, because if that does not go in, chances are it's going to be a long rebound. And that time, uh, credit to Tanner Lockoff. He got a board. He yep. looked right away for the shooter, Brooks Lockoff, and he connected. And what a, what a game this has been. Yeah, I'm looking at the scoreboard now. You know, Lockoff has, has 12 now in the basketball game, and he had just four in, in the halftime, and he has really got it going with eight points here just in this quarter. Well, you can tell Jim Linder really told him to try to step it up. He's had to try to force some things, but again, that was from uh, Coach Jim Leonard's direction. That's how good this OG defense has been. They've just stifled things out of the lane. They forced them to the sidelines, making it awfully tough. And this Wayne Trace team is not here by accident. There's a reason they're playing for a right to go to Dayton, and they're leaving it all out there. Still down by four, but enough time left to uh, make a difference here. Titans are going to have to handle the basketball and make some free throws. Inbound, Erford to Colin White. And White will be fouled from behind by uh, Brooks Lockoff, just his second, but we'll head back to the free throw line. If you're looking for a little game reset, OG has six team fouls. That will be the eighth team foul on uh, Wayne Trace. Wayne Trace has just a single timeout left. OG has three. The arrow does favor the Titans right now. That's yeah, still one on one right here, but I'm not sure Cal White's the guy you really want to put there. But that left it short. Erfurt sure. goes against the rebound. Huge offensive rebound, Caden Erford. He got fouled. He gets to go to the free throw line. And Erford, another 80% uh, free throw shooter, but what a big rebound that was. This will be the last one on one of the afternoon coming up for the Titans. But wow, what a big time play. Just when Wayne Trace looked like they might get an opportunity to make this a one possession game, He's Erford comes up huge. And he missed. Mag tipped it around, ends up in the hands of Davis. And then we're going to get a foul that will go against Hunter Steck shortly, and we're going to walk to the other end to shoot free throws. Oh, after the mistake that time by OG, you, know, you have to love how they're trying to extend that rebound. And once uh, Brooks Lockoff gets it, you don't want that foul that's going to stop the clock, allow them to walk to the other end and make this a one possession game. There you can see the miss, the tip. Great job there by Davis. He gets it to lock off, and there you see the help a little bit late there from Steck Schulte. Huge one-on-one -on -one coming up here for Brooks Lockoff. 74% free throw shooter on the season. He's not been there yet today. He's got eight points in the quarter. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw, and now nine in the quarter. You know, awfully big, and this one's even bigger. You need to have a way to not only 
get this down to a two-point game, but it also allows you to set up some full-court pressure. And it rolled out. The lead stays at three. Rebound, Colin White under pressure. And stolen. They get it back. Here's Mag at midcourt, and he lost the ball to me. Shoot it. I don't have any eligibility left, Scoop, but I got the basketball. Ah, oh, great job there by the Raiders. Tenacious defense uh, after the uh, lock off missed free throw. They didn't give up. I liked how they didn't give up a foul right away. Yeah. They tried to get the steal, had a near steal, but then they uh, forced a turnover. And now, just a one possession game as Brooks Lockoff brings it up. Raiders down three. They don't need a three, but they need a score. Trying to get it to Stoller and finally do, but 45 feet from the goal. Here's Brooks Lockoff and Steckscholdy. Lockoff to the lane, little floater in the lane, rolls out, rebound. Davis had it, but was knocked out of his hands from behind. Uh, the Titans off the fortune at that time. They didn't get whistled for a foul there on that rebound. And uh, Jimmy Linder's going to burn a full timeout, the last timeout here for Wayne Trace. Here it is, the very last timeout that they have. That one floats up. There's the rebound action from behind that goes off of Erford out of bounds. Look at this double team right there after up. this free throw. White goes and gets it again. Here's the pass to Mag. And Look at that play right to there. me. I got that scoop. I had to, I had to scoop. I was open. How about the hustle play in the corner by both teams, though, Scoop? I tell you what, it's just been that kind of game from the get-go. Neither team has taken a playoff, and that's a credit to both these programs. There's a reason these teams have so much history, so much success uh, over the season. Of course, Otto Glandorf's been to the Final Four nine times. Wayne Trace has been there, uh, I believe, five times. I mean, these are two programs that are awfully familiar with making tournament runs. And both these teams want to get back to Dayton awfully badly. We're seeing it right here. What a great contest well, just, this has been. Just look around, Scoop. They're both basketball communities. You know, you, everybody in, the, in both communities play basketball, understand basketball, know it. It's just a great environment. It's a trip to both teams. And we're going to see what Coach Linder came up with with 19.9 and no more timeouts remaining. Here's Lockoff. Tanner Lockoff comes up a screen. Now Stoller. Tanner Lockoff. Davis looked at a shot. He's going to pull up from the line and nailed it. Wow, what a shot there by Tyler Davis. They were running out of options. Credit Davis. He stepped up, took the big clutch shot, drains it. Watch it right here in the replay. He steps in there. Beautiful looking stroke there by the southpaw. And just like that, we're all knotted at 47. Tyler Davis, who had 13 three-point field goals in their first 27 games, that was number 14 for his senior season. Yeah, OG with a timeout. Line drive, jump shot. Tyler Davis knocks it at 47. OG calls timeout. Any foul will send them to the free throw line with a double bonus. So they're going to get the ball and go right to the rim, Scoop. Yeah, it's going to be important that you force the ball into the backcourt. You do not allow a, an easy pass to midcourt. Then you're going to have to find a way to reroute the, the ball hitter. 6.6 .6 is plenty of time to yep. get to the rim. And you mentioned it, Mark, the last thing you want to do is put them at the foul line. Where they're going to be in the double bonus. So we'll see what Coach Jim Linder has up his sleeve. He'll look for some maybe some three-quarter court pressure here to try to take an extra second or two off. But one more time, look yeah. at Davis there. Yeah, Great camera work, the left toe just an inch and a half behind that uh, three-point line. It looks like an around press row to discuss whether it's two or three. Doesn't matter, it's a three on the scoreboard. Here's Steckscholdy. Titans headed down floor. Erford, pull up three for Erford. Missed everything, we're going to overtime. The Wayne Trace Raiders fight back with an 18-point fourth quarter. We're going to go to the first overtime. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN.
Overtime presented by Production Products Incorporated in Columbus Grove. They're hiring, offering great opportunities to advance at a free on-site medical clinic. Apply today at midwayproducts.com. Our presenting sponsor today is Simplified Flooring. We install with accuracy and efficiency so you can start enjoying your home's new look as soon as possible. Simplified Flooring. And our premier sponsor for the Wayne Trace Raiders is Cary Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by to see how Cary Insurance can assist you with your insurance needs. An 18 to 10 fourth quarter action. Theo Mag went to the locker room. We know he's had some abrasion issues with his knee. Not sure what else, but he is in the locker room right now. What a great fourth quarter by Wayne Trace, yes, uh, holding that prolific uh, OG team to just 10 points, outscored them 18 to 10. They finally got the scoreboard corrected too. Brooks Lockoff had seven in the quarter, as did uh, Kyle Stoller. There's Coach Linder, He's, he'll get another timeout now and have one, OG will have three. And remember, Mark, we talked about when OG shoots below 48%, they're just three and three on the season. Right now, they're at 47.5% on the game. Ball is tipped into the backcourt. Hunter Stecksholdy, we're going overtime to see who plays Afrocentric in the state semifinal next weekend. Brad Mag has taken Theo Mag's place. Here's Colin White down low. A little turnaround jumper is short. Rebound, Stoller. Uh, Stiller's been so huge. Him and uh, Tyler Davis on the boards. They've now out-rebounded the Titans by four here in this contest. Just unbelievable the job they've done trying to uh, get on the glass at both ends. Colin White pressures Kyle Stoller out to midcourt. Here's Brooks Lockoff loose. But they help out to him in a hurry. Tanner Lockoff. Here's Brooks Lockoff for three. Short. And... Colin White gets the rebound that a couple of different Raiders tap to each other. A minute in, no score overtime. Colin White looking to get inside against Lockoff and can't. Now he gets it back again. Well, he's going to go one on one here. Look for him to try to stress the floor a little bit. Good help defense by the Raiders. Hunter Brink ball faked and lost it, but he was fouled in the corner. Shadowald says that Theo Mag has a knee situation. They're trying to get repaired in the locker room to get him back on the floor. Appreciate Ryan getting down in the locker room as our sideline reporter today, Scoop. And Underbrink uh, head to the line to shoot, too. A 50% free throw shoot in the season. First one splashes through. Titans retake the league. The double bonus of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Here's Levi again. Long, but he gets his own rebound. But that time, Hunter Brink went in the lane too soon, got away with it. Collar right shots blocked by Davis. Who hit it out of bounds? Davis did. Kyle Davis, or Tyler Davis, is limping now. He grabbed his left knee. He looked at Coach Linder, and Coach Linder looked at him. Now the official's going to come out and say, can you play? And he says, yes, I can. And we're going to get an offensive foul as Colin White shoved over a Raider. Who did he get? Well, Brooks Lockoff? Hudson Myers okay. again takes the charge. Somebody's done so well throughout the season. That's just a heady play. Uh, great job right there. You can see he's a coach's kid right there. Excellent job getting position. There's a steal, steal. there from the other end. Underbrink inside. He tried to pass it to Colin White. Stole or stole it. And Underbrink's going to get called for a foul. Wow, what a flurry of action. Ah, great job that time by Kyle Stoller to sell the call. Watch it right here. He's being pressured mightily. They're uh, losing a little bit uh, off the foot of Underbrink. Fischl's got it right. This is still just a one-on-one -on -one here. The ninth uh, tight foul here in the second half. There's Theo Mag back on the bench. There's a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. This will be the last one-on-one -on -one of the basketball game. It's OG now has nine team fouls. Made that one. Point number 20 for Kyle Stoller. Here comes Mag back in the game. Well, that's a welcome sign for Otto Glandorf fans as he's had an outstanding game. He's been one of those tough guards 
at the offensive ends. Also uh, been a big contributor on the glass. The Huge man. free throw coming up for the junior, Kyle Stoller. Up and in, puts his team up. Theo Mag with 12 points. That's Stoller's 21st point of the basketball game. To go along with eight rebounds and a couple of assists. Huge game for him. Here's White turning the corner. Cut off by a pair of different Raiders, and they banged it off of his own foot. Uh, what a tremendous play in the half court by the Raiders. First, Kyle Stoller came over to help and rerouted White, and then uh, Lockoff was able to knock it off White's leg there. Now they're going for the home, home run. run ball. Tanner Lockoff head of the pack, and he goes up and scores. What a pressure. Throw, wow, what a, what a shot. shot. Are you kidding me? The hang time was incredible. Oh, Tanner Lockoff has points six and seven for him, puts his team up three. White working the lane again. Colin White to the rim, missed that one, gets his own rebound and goes up again. Missed that one, gets his own rebound and fights it up and gets fouled. What an effort by Colin White at the other end. That's why he's such a special player. He just stepped up at the other end, makes a play, and then he stays with it. Watch this long baseball pass. Watch the hang time. He takes it right at the heart of that defense in Caden Erdford. But look how he's oh, able to not only hang, but how do you get this basketball to go in? What a soft touch there by the freshman. What a big time play. Colin White with a couple of huge leads, famous recipe chicken free throws coming up as his team trails by three. White free throw good. That's point nine for him. He's been awfully big. Wow. Uh, that goes without saying. But uh, again, his presence here, his leadership. Made them both. And now they're able to set up that press. Just a one point lead here for Wayne Trace. He's got 10 to go with his 12 rebounds today. There's a pass inbound. Lock off. Tanner weaving around. His team is up by a point. And we're going to get a foul in the backcourt by Caden Erford. Now, Coach McLaughlin not happy with that foul right there in Erford, but that's going to send uh, Lockoff to the stripe, and that's a 10th team foul. So, as you mentioned, Mark, double bonus for both teams here on out. And Brooks Lockoff uh, comes in 74% from the stripe on the season. One for two today, and one for three now. There's the foul in the backcourt right there. Brooks lock off again. That when he makes, that's point 12 for him today. Two point lead, Raiders, White again. Gets a screen from Erford. Erford gets a three look under pressure. Bottoms it out. Wow, what a shot from the junior, Kane Erford. Big time pressure shot, nothing but net. Was it ever? Watch this one again. Under pressure. Well, great execution. And credit Cal White. Uh, he knew the hedge was coming his way. That's going to free up Erford. Erford again, but he can catch and shoot rhythm. A guy you don't want to get in the game horse with. Let's take a break. It's an OG Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. Nerfer just nailed a three ball from the corner. Our three balls tonight are sponsored by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. We're going to make some free throws at the end or have plenty of attempts anyway. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima. Wapak and Delphus call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken where home style happens here. Erford had 11 at halftime. He had two free throws in the third quarter, had not scored since then. That gave him points 14, 15, and 16. With 90 seconds to go, his coach took a timeout. And again, it bounced the lock off. This is Brooks. And now Tanner lock off. The acrobatic two point field goal was the first field goal of overtime. 
There's Brooks Lockout trying to get away from Colin White and can't. Raiders have a single timeout remaining. This is Brooks Lockoff. Levi Underbrink. And Erford was pressuring Winans on the sideline. He stepped out of bounds. Wow, what a tough break. But again, when you're playing on that sideline, you're playing with fire. And that time there was some physicality, but again, the official's been very consistent and let that go. A little bump forces Winans to step on the sideline. Huge break for the Titans. Under a minute to go. Titans missed some free throws in the fourth quarter, and they're going to get an opportunity now as Hunter Steckschulte is fouled. Steckschulte, a 75% free throw shooter of the season, has not been there yet today for a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Hunter Steckschulte. Long. Titans missed two one and ones in overtime. And that one is long, but scramble for rebounds. Brooks Lockoff. They've got numbers headed the other way. Lockoff finds Winans, and he will be fouled. Ball fake got under break up in the air. Uh, great job by Brooks Lockoff. He draws the traffic and look the dime he throws there. And you see the gather step there by Winans. Draws the defender up in the air and there he draws the contact. Yeah. Winans on the season, just a 53% free throw shooter. Trying to tie things up at 53 right here. The first of two. Winans' role on this basketball team is not as a scorer per se. He averages just one and a half points a game. He's a defensive player and a, a ball distributor. Here's a big free throw for him. And got it. Uh, the tie. Free throw by Winans. He's been stellar to defensive end. Really limited to touches of uh, Callan White and also Caden Erford all night long. There's OG. Will they play last shot to win it or go to double OT? And how does. The Wayne Trace Raiders play this one. Right now, just a sagging man-to-man -man up front, very content letting OG run this thing down. Brooks Lockoff has Colin White. Davis has Theo Mag. Winans has Erford. Do they have a set or they call a timeout? They're going to play. Here's Colin White. Lockoff from behind pressures him. White works and timeout, Ottawa Glandorf. 2.7 seconds to go. This will be a Metzger Financial Services timeout. And we're going to keep it right here. Scoop, they're going to have the basketball in bounds right in front of their scores table. Yeah, that time, Tyce McLaughlin recognized they had nothing going. Great job by Wayne Trace. They had that play all uh, scouted out, did a great job, hedging over on Callan White, rerouted him to the sideline. They're going to burn uh, their timeout. They still have one left, as does Wayne Trace. But Mark, what a battle this has oh been. You know, the all-time series is even at 6-6. Six yep. Six. Yep. Uh, most of these games have been at the tournament level. This is the first one ever in the regional. What a show we've had here this afternoon. Well, you can think, is Wayne Trace going to call timeout now? Are they going to look at what the setup is and say, OK, timeout, here's how we're going to defend it? Yeah, you I would, would think. You'd think they probably, that's certainly an option if uh, they come out and see where they're going to go with it. But again, Wayne Trace here, you know the number one option is going to be Kyle White, but the good thing for Tyce McLaughlin, you've got some great options. You yeah. don't have just one option. Obviously, if you've got a guy yeah. that's uh, looking to play big-time basketball, he's yeah. probably option one. Erford's taking the ball out of bounds, and there's the Linder timeout. But Erford was going to take the ball out of bounds, and he immediately becomes a weapon because nobody was guarding him. So a quick inbound and a pass back, he would have a jump shot too. But again, Coach McLaughlin does a lot of timeout, a lot of options at this timeout. But Coach Linder took that one. Yeah, I love the timeout right there. With 2.7, you know, this is the last possession of this first overtime. So, and again, you're right. A lot of times, the 2.7, there's enough time to get the ball back to the inbounder. So that's something you have to be concerned of, especially. A guy like Erford who shoots 46% from beyond the arc, but a lot of time to work with here at 2.7. Certainly if you're OG, you'd like to get something going to the rim if you can, because if Wayne Trace fouls, you're on the free throw line for a double bonus. 
see how both coaches play it. Scoop, it's what tournament basketball is all about, man. It really is. And uh, Wayne Trace, they're going to come out and play physical. They're not going to allow any passes inside for free. And uh, this is one of those uh, tough scenarios here for both teams. But this is why you put in all the time in the offseason, all the time in the summer. It comes down to 2.7. Here we go. Herford inbound. Mag, they tried to get it back to Herford. Mag's going to get a three that hit the rim. They tried to get it back to Herford on the out of bounds play, they but sure Linus stepped up and played him. And we will go to overtime number two. You're watching high school tournament basketball on WOSN. at the Stroh Center, our regional final is presented by Simplified Flooring. We install with accuracy and efficiency so you can enjoy your home's new look as soon as possible. That's Simplified Flooring. Carry Insurance, Premier Sponsor Wayne Trace. In Grover Hill, call or stop by to see how Carry Insurance can assist you with your insurance needs. And our second overtime brought to you by Production Products Incorporated Columbus Grove and their hiring, offering great opportunities to advance free on-site medical. You can apply at MidwayProducts.com, overtime number two. 36 minutes hasn't been enough today. Titans with a basketball. This is Mag on top. Utterbrink looking inside. Uh, Colin White could not get it down to him. Each team scored six points in the first overtime. Stecholdy, his pass is blocked out of bounds. 24 seconds into this overtime. In case you wondered, OG 4-3 in single-digit games. Wayne Trey 6-5. Both these teams have been tested down the stretch. I believe uh, OG 1-0 in overtime games. I think they pu pulled out an overtime win against Van Wert, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's correct. Here's Colin White. And that was two overtime, by the way. I think it was, yes. Van Wert will play the next game here today if we ever get this one over with. Here's White coming off a screen. Father from behind and lock off. Almost got a steal, but Mag picks it up. A oh, huge break for the Titans. And Wayne Trace had a chance to get their hands on that basketball. And now we're uh, one minute in, still deadlocked at 53. White and Brooks lock off. Colin White's going to try to get in the lane. Now he's spin dribble and scores. And what's the call? The basket will count. Colin White. Another big time play by Kyle White. Watch it right here. The little hesitation, spin move. He's able to slip his defender, and now he'll go for the end one. That's a big dagger to start things out here. And if you noticed, uh, Kyle Stoller came limping out of that. White makes the free throw. He's got 13 in the game. His team leads by three. Stoller appears to be okay going up the floor. His coach gets another timeout. OG has two now. Erford with a steal. Knocked it loose. Boy, good hands. Ah, tremendous play there by Erford. Uh, was able to get his quick hands in there, tip it up, use his length to corral it. Now OG would love to uh, go back to White. Colin White again goes to the rim. He finds Stecholdy. Underbrink in the corner, tried to get inside. Mag has it, throws it back out on the top. White, nope. Stecholdy, nope. They decided to pull it back up. Now two wide open yeah. looks that time after the deflection fell into the hands of the Titans. There's that I'm high ball screen again. Colin White lost it. Pushes it to Stecholdy. And his coach took a timeout. Just under two minutes into this one. Timeout out of McLandor. If you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Scoreboard today is provided by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of all the seamless spouting. Our instant replays today have been brought to you by Loudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit Loudix at the Van Wert location or online at loudix.com. 
that was a Metzger Financial Services timeout, leaving each team with one in the second overtime. There's Colin White right in front of us. In this awful scoop, we got such bad seats for this game right here at midcourt. <laughs> Steck Schulte, White, his team's up three. Erford. Steck Schulte, play a little bump and run with Tanner Lockoff. Five count on. Steck Schulte turns the corner, goes to the rim, hands off the mag for a basket. A uh, great job by Hunter Steck Schulte once again. Breaks down that Raider defense, drops a dime there. The largest lead of either overtime. Yet another basket in the paint for Ottawa Glandorf, two scoop, five point lead. Steal, Stexual is on the floor, rips it loose. Titans have numbers, three on two. Stexual is gonna weave around and bring it back to White. And we're gonna get a foul. Let's see who they give that to. Looks like it'll go to Brooks Lockoff. Six his third, I think. Actually, it's his fourth, I believe. Yeah. Right now, this tight defense really exerting itself. They just keep reaching down. They find it more energy down in the tank. I'm not sure how they do it. Running Trace right now, kind of going on fumes. They did such a great job after turning it over so many times at third quarter mark. Fourth quarter, they did only turn it over one time, but here in the second overtime, they've been yeah. plagued by a few turnovers. Lead up to seven. Colin White splashes a pair of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. His team leads by seven with 60 seconds to go. Second overtime. Brooks Lockoff. Trying to turn the corner and cannot because Erford grabbed a hold of him. It's just amazing how out of Landorf is winning those one-on-one -on -one perimeter battles. Even when they switch off on those ball screens, they still have that act for defense there to lock in, but that time they a little bit too much. The Brooks lock off, and there he connects on the first of two. Point 13 for him is a Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. And Stoller's gonna limp out. He went down hard a minute ago. It's gonna be a defensive possession. A lot of guys on both sides, Mark, well, playing through a lot of pain yes here tonight, sir. but they do not run off this floor. Brooks Lockoff makes the second. He's got 13 points in the game. The lead is five. Erford trying to find an inbounder and finally gets it to White, but way in the corner where he's fouled by Winans. Now, tough call that time. I really love what Wayne Trace did that time. They jumped Winans out uh, after Winans tried to kind of lean into Brooks Lockoff, head to the corner. Great recognition by Winans. He gets called for the foul. Right now, if you're Wayne Trace, you have to find a way to length this game down two possessions with just 50 seconds remaining. I, my score sheet's become a mess. I think Colin White is now nine of 10 from the free throw line. Yeah, again, he's just been in too many big ball games. I think he wanted to try to find somebody else, but that was not a foul they were intentionally given. Yep. They were trying to go for the steal. Nothing wrong with what uh, Winan was doing right there. He just got whistled uh, for being a little bit too close. And that one he makes as well. Carter Clemens had checked in as part of the defensive posse, but now instead, Stoller's back in the game. It's seven again. Here's Stoller, Kyle with the basketball, hands off the Winans. Brooks Lockoff, one of the three, they got to him in a hurry. Three under pressure is long, and Erford rebounds. And Erford looks like he's exhausted. Still managed to get the ball up to midcourt to Steck Schulte. And the OG Titans are going to run it out. Here's a hint, Scoop. When the adrenaline goes away from these two teams, there's going to be a lot of exhausted boys in bed tonight. Well, they left everything out there. Both these teams are going to walk off this fourth or head high. Uh, Wayne Trey is certainly going to be disappointed. They didn't get it done, but it wasn't for lack of effort. As the Titans are moving on. OG Titans will take a 62-55 win. And let's watch. I, I think Scoop, they're almost uh, too exhausted to flat out celebrate. There's their crowd. The crowd's not too exhausted. No, uh, credit both these uh, communities. 
It was one of those deals where last one out of town, turn off the lights. Yes, Both sir. these teams well represented. This Tro Center was filled to the rafters, and everyone here in attendance got treated to a dandy here this afternoon. It is time to pass out championship hardware to each team and each player. Scoop and I'll be back with a post-game show in just a moment. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Stroh Center. It's been double overtime in the second overtime this evening. Ottawa Glander put nine on the board to just two for Wayne Trace. Scoop, we saw a tremendous high school basketball game. Oh, we've seen so many over the years, but this is one of the best here. You know, two teams, kind of backyard rivals, know each other so well. Both these programs now with the combined 15 trips to the final four. And there you see it, uh, Ottawa Glander uh, emerges regional champions. They advanced to take on Afrocentric to take on the Nubians who advanced uh, earlier this afternoon. Afrocentric 155-38 over South Point today. Uh, Ottawa Glander defeated Afrocentric a year ago in the semifinals, so that will be a rematch of that particular activity. Scoop, I'm looking here at Wayne Trace. They're going to finish up the season at 21-7. and seven. Uh, Kyle Stoller today, 21 points, eight boards. Brooke Lockoff, 14 points. The future is incredibly bright for Wayne Trace. It's a disappointing day today, but the future is so bright for the Raider program. It really is. Jim Lindner's done a great job with the Raiders this season, and a lot of credit's going to go out to uh, Tyler Davis, uh, their lone starting senior, who was uh, such a workhorse, one of those guys that did all the dirty work behind the scenes. But you're right, Mark. This is the team that's oozing with talent yes. at the lower levels, and uh, they made their footprint here this afternoon. I think they were underdog coming in. They never doubted themselves. They took OG uh, tooth and nail, and it took uh, 40 minutes before OG was able to punch their ticket yeah. down to date. Uh, uh, Caden Erford comes in. He put 16 on the board, had a huge three-point field goal in the overtime. Theo Mag with 14 today. But Scoop, as I look at it, Colin White had just eight points at the end of regulation. He's got nine points in the two overtimes. He finishes with 12 points and three assists when they needed something in the overtimes, they went to him. Yeah, and uh, why not? You know, it doesn't take a genius to figure out, get the ball to Colin White. He's so athletic. You know, both teams were kind of going on fumes. They just did not take one possession off this entire game. That's what made it so entertaining, but credit this OG team. They proved today they're more than a one-man show. They had so many different guys step up and make key contributions, whether it was a key rebound, a key steal, uh, you know, a key bucket, a key free throw, just a total team effort by the Titans, and they're going to move on. At the end of the season, the Titans will rank number one in the state in Division Three. They will take a 24-3 and record into the state tournament next weekend. We're going to run down our sponsors who have been such an important part of today. Simplified Flooring, Ultimate Outdoor, Loudix Jewelry, Carry Insurance, Dale's Concrete, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Production Products Incorporated, Metzger Financial Services, Lox Chiropractic, and Lima Chevrolet Cadillac have made all this possible. Scoop all season long. We've had great sponsorship of, of WSNWTLW and our sports broadcast, and we thank every one of them. Yeah, those guys are the true heroes that make it happen. We're able to bring it into your living room because of our great sponsors that we have. And uh, I know I, as much as anybody, enjoy turning uh, it on and watching some great uh, high school athletics, and we've been blessed through the years. And here at this Stroh Center, the management has been outstanding since Tuesday. I want to thank uh, Jamie Beringer, the tournament director, who has been such a big help for us the, all of this week here with one more game remaining yet this afternoon. Uh, our director, all season long producer, here's our crew. Uh, a scoop, these guys are outstanding. Uh, nobody come turn this thing on and hear what you and I have to say. It's the production that these guys do. Um, ben Reif, our producer, director. Megan Sherrick does all of our graphics and replay. Jacob O'Neill, Mia Waddle, Kelsey Beimer, Stephen McNeil, back at the station, Kelly Getz, Nick Fraley, and a host of people put this thing together. Ryan Shadowald today, who ran out and did some stuff for us today just to find out how Theo Mag was. It, it has been a great year. We really appreciate all the people who have helped do this and all of our family scoop who allow us to be gone so much during the season. We appreciate them as well. Here's our people back at the station. There, there's your uncoordinated announcer's name in there as well, our multi-cam people. But scoop it has been a great season, and we really appreciate what all these people have done. 
130 high school basketball games were telecast. This is 129. Van Wert coming up is 130. Uh, all since November, what a great year it's been. It's just really incredible, and we're so blessed in Northwest Ohio to see great yep. basketball no matter where we travel. Everyone knows how good the 419 is. We were witness to that here this afternoon as these two teams left it all out there. But uh, there you see it, uh, OG uh, is going to move on to play Afrocentric. Well, we, we got the score a little bit messed up on there, so forgive us for that. But we're going to head to Dayton next weekend. We're not allowed to telecast any games next weekend. We're going to put together some highlight shows for you and, and some things that you can see late in the evening next weekend. Uh, Crestview will be down there. Ottawa Glandorf will be there. Perhaps Van Wert as well. They have to play yet today, and we will look forward to bringing you some coverage from down at the University of Dayton next week. Ottawa Glandorf in two overtimes in a tremendous instant classic basketball game defeats Wayne Trace to go to the regional from the regionals to the state next week. You've been watching high school tournament basketball on WOSN. Gap a little bit. We thought we closed it enough tonight, but we didn't quite get get that break we needed. Uh, they had a really big shot. The Irver kid had a really big shot. I'm not sure if that was the end of regulation or the end of first overtime. We were up a point or two. We thought if that shot maybe wouldn't have fell, you know, things would have run a little different. I thought we did a tremendous job on Colin White. He had two points going through into the fourth quarter. But when the game got on the line, he took it over, and we had a tough time doubling him. You know, he just got the ball and demanded the ball, and he did what he needed to do to lead his team. But... But you know what, so did these guys. These guys led our team really well, so we're real proud of them. <clears throat> you know, I don't know if we got tired right in there. They wear you down. <clears throat> they really wear you down, and that's something they like to do. Um, and, and not only does it wear you down physically, it wears you down mentally. And I don't know if we just got a little complacent right there. But, uh, and then we seemed to got a second burst of wind there. You know, Tyler hit a big shot to send the thing into overtime. And um, I think it just maybe sparked us a little bit. But you're right, we did have a little law. You're correct. <clears throat> It seemed like when they came in, I told the kids too, it seemed like when they came in out of, the, out of the locker room, they probably got a pretty good chewing, you know, and they got some energy. And they really ramped their defense up in the third quarter. We had a tough time running any set. <clears throat> so we were just trying to hang on to survive for about three minutes there. Then once it settled down and maybe they got a little tired, we seemed like we could get into our sets more. And we felt like <clears throat> we, if we ran our sets and controlled the ball, you know, we were able to have a chance at the end. That's kind of what we told the boys all week. You just got to make sure we limit – Limit turnovers, which I think we did. I'm not sure what we ended up with. I think it was under 10, I hope. Maybe it was right in that range. But that's not bad against that kind of pressure. And uh, just make sure we shot the, shot the shot we wanted to shoot. And, uh, you know, we didn't want to stall, but we want to make sure we got a really good look each possession. And that's what, kind of what we tried to do all night. Well, you know, they, they, were, they were guarding these two really hard, and he's been our third scorer all year long, and he's very capable of it. We played him last year, and he scored 10 or 12 against them. Um, when he shoots it well and scores well, we're, we're, we're even that much better. Um, so, and, I, and I thought Hudson Myers played really good tonight, too. Hudson scored for us and did the right things. And it was a complete team effort. I'm, I'm really proud of our guys. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. We, we, we've played probably four, sometimes the five defenses all year long. And um, that's special when you can, when, you know, some teams like to just get into what they do well. But we had a group that we thought we could mix it and match it. And, and they're smart enough to adapt to different defenses. And uh, each night was a different, each night was a different uh, scenario. We played a, a pretty tough schedule. Played some, a lot of D2 schools, played a D1 school in there with Tiffin uh, Columbian. And so we had some different, uh, uh, things presented to us that we just felt some night once one would work and other nights another, a different defense. So tonight ended up being our man. That's um, so what we had to go to. <clears throat> I 
Well, <clears throat> you like to bring two or three kids with you from each class as you go. If you can get two or three, that's a pretty good number. Sometimes you get a big number like, like we've had over the years or OG's had, but the fact that he stuck with us for, for what, six, at least six years through junior high, right? That says a lot about Tyler Davis. Um, never quit. You know, his team, wasn't, his team really wasn't good growing up as a seventh grader, eighth grader, but he stayed with it. And then he grew. You know, he grew. Uh, he wasn't this tall a couple years ago. And that really helped us because that gave us another post player, which we needed. <clears throat> um, yeah, definitely. Um, Brooks is a special player, and I'm lucky to play with a guy like him. But uh, I feel like I have the advantage when teams focus that much uh, attention on Brooks. And uh, coaches told me before the game, if we're gonna have a chance. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to be a man and take over. So that's kind of my mentality the first half and going into the second, the whole game. They scouted really well. We played them the last four years. They know our, all our plays, basically. Uh, they take you out of your sets and uh, throw physical on you. But I don't know. I feel like I just I couldn't get it going today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are a really young team, really inexperienced. I mean, me and Brooks have played for, for three years now, and Tyler played a little bit last year. But um, those young kids coming in, and uh, they, they had to get comfortable. And at the beginning of the year in some of those GMC games, um, it was tough uh, for them to kind of feel the flow of the game. So we struggled early, but um, I, I think it, it shows a lot about the resilience this team had, making that run, sticking together. I mean, it would have been pretty easy to look. You look at the GMC and say you didn't win that, well, um, we're going to give up. But we never did and pushed through every game. And, and every game we, we played hard. And this is, this is the result. Um, yep. I just. Uh, I think this is what high school basketball is all about. You got two programs and two schools that are so similar in a lot of ways when you talk about the history. Um, you know, this, this isn't a 2022-23 a uh, battle or rivalry. I mean, this, this goes back. I mean, I got my neighbor that talks about the game in 88 all the time and, you know, and just the history of not only um, OG Wayne Trace, but the, the implications and the tournament implications. Um, this is a long-standing rivalry, and uh, but it, but it's done the right way. You can't find a more high-level, just high-energy game, but never once was there anything where you know it was done the wrong way. And, and I think you know for high school sports and sometimes with our society, you know I think they could have learned a couple things from the kids on the floor tonight. Tyson, what was kind of the game by going to that second overtime? Well, you know what? We were just trying to get space. We were trying to get space with Colin, and you know, we started to go with that ball screen action, and we really opened to one side of the floor. Um, you know, we just kept on trying to find some different avenues defensively. They were so good; they were they were mixing up some different defense as far as I shouldn't say defenses, just the way they were guarding some people. Um, but we were able to get that ball screen action and put Kate on the corner to really give a little bit more space. And then Colin was able to get, you know, either fouled or, you know, get to the basket a couple of times. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, at the, in the locker room at halftime, the coaches said we're gonna come out. We need the best defensive half that we that we've had all year, and we came out and we did what we could. We tried to give it our best on the defensive end. 
Coach, a lot of times you guys have been referred to as a machine. Now this year, obviously, a great season. But you show that you can respond to adversity. Can you just talk about the players and get to that? We've got tough kids. I know that's kind of cliche. Um, but tonight is a testament. That, that's a perfect example. We were not, Wayne Trace was better than us today. I mean, it is what it is. They were better than us today. But these guys weren't going to go down without a, without a punch. And how many times, you know, especially in that third quarter, we did everything we needed to do. It's just somehow the ball didn't go your way. And, and we didn't get down. We didn't get frustrated. We didn't get discouraged. We continued to fight. And that's all these kids know. They don't know anything else. I mean that in a nice way, but you play hard. And if you play hard, good things are going to happen. And we were able to get the momentum to change there a little bit. And uh, you know, this guy's playing on one leg right now, and he's just—he's a senior. He knows what's at stake. And you know, now we get another week with one another. I was. Yeah. Hunter, or uh, I think we got Theo, Theo and Colin, and then Hunter was Hunter was on the on that ride too, and you know that that experience is it's invaluable, um, but that's it goes far beyond just those guys that are on the court. It's it's everybody in our program. They see that they they want a taste of you know now Dayton, and uh, you know it's something we definitely don't take for granted. It's just uh, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of a lot of dedication with these guys. Well, I think the big thing was we didn't get transition today. We, they, they did a fantastic job of handling the ball and handling the pressure. Every time we had about an opportunity to get a turnover, it just it didn't bounce our way. And then a couple times we did turn them over later in the game. They were dead ball turnovers. You know, so the ball went out of bounds and they were able to set up their defense. And, uh, you know, that, that's a credit to those guys. I, I, I know everybody talks about, you know, lock off and Stoller, and those, those guys are really, really good. But their supporting cast handled the pressure. They did the little things. They made shots. Um, that's, that, like I said, I, it's nothing against our guys. They did everything in their power to, to win the game. But we just got some, we got some guys that refused to lose today. Uh, no, it was just, just this game. Uh, some, I forget who it was, but it came to my knee and like hyperextended it. So Just got a foot-ish, just a little, little foot thing, just nagging. We'll have them ready. You know, I thought a key play was when he got inside to put up a bunny, didn't go down, got the rebound, put it up, didn't go down, got the rebound again. I think he got to the line that time. Uh, is it hard to fight off getting frustrated when that ball just won't seem to go in the hole? Um, to be honest, I'm kind of used to it, so <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's like, I don't know, I, I do get frustrated, but like I just keep my calm and just do what I can do and try to make those three throws. Not pushing on the team? <laughs> no, not, not close. Is the three throws here that you can Well, yeah, I mean, I, you got 4,000 people in this gym. You know, half of them are screaming, praying that you miss. The other half are praying that you make it. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot on the line. It's an opportunity to go to state. And, and I think, you know, you get a little bit, of, you get a little tense. Um, it's really important to, you know, to hit that first one. And uh, unfortunately for us, we had a little streak there where we didn't shoot very well, but I thought we finished off strong. And uh, like I said, you know, there's, you talk about it all the time, but you can't simulate that type of pressure in practice. Uh, we've kind of been seeing it all year, kind of helped us out for this. We knew uh, it was going to be a different defense that we were going to see tonight. And, you know, shots weren't falling for him early, but, you know, we always 
we preach at OG, the next man up mentality, and it just happened to be me tonight. It could have been anyone out there, though. You like the fact that sometimes you kind of fly under the radar on the scouting report because there's just so many. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. I mean, they, they're going to sit off. I'm not going to complain, you know. <laughs> yeah, at the beginning of the season, uh, we all had a goal. First goal was win the W Bell, and we did. But the true goal was get back to Dayton, and we got some guys that we're going to do anything in their power to get back. And I think that's what we did today. Yeah. <laughs>